um, apologies. Okay, so we're gonna start a new model, okay? Um, and uh, this model is going to uh, be created in a way that it's time unit is days, and it's going to be called um, SITS. So I'll call it three CMPG three ninety four under bar R no under bar SITS V one. Okay, time unit days. And we're going to create this model. So SITS indicates it'll be a set of um, uh, susceptible, infected, temporarily immune people, and then S again. Um, maybe I'll call it SIRS, just that's a more common way to say it. Um, okay, so um, SIRS, uh, susceptible, infected, recovered, and then the final S indicates people can go back to a susceptible state. Now we're gonna, we've already acquainted ourselves with the basic um, uh, building blocks of system dynamics models. Uh, and we're going to build this up fairly quickly to reflect that, okay? Um, so we're going to drag in a stock and this stock is going to be susceptibles and we will uh, make this um, a bit larger so we can see it easily. Uh, and we're going to have uh, an initial value for this, which we will be changing, but first I'm going to duplicate it by copying it and I'm going to paste it just so we get a nice big shape of similar size, okay? So we're gonna have susceptibles. We're going to have infectives here. And we are going to have, and I'll paste it one more time, recovered individuals, okay? But they're going to be temporarily immune. They're not gonna be, they're not gonna be immune forever. Um, and that's where we're going with this, recovered. At first, they'll be immune perpetually, but then we'll, we'll play this out. And if we get to that point, this class, we'll explore the implications this class, but we may do it in a take-home exercise. Okay, now, We've seen something like this. At first blush, this looks a little bit like the beginning of an aging chain. And we're gonna put in some mechanisms at first that are gonna look like this. But first we're gonna set the, whoa, oh, no, no, no. We're gonna set the initial values of these stocks. So we're gonna set here the uh, number of susceptibles to be 300,000, okay? Now that's a bit many, uh, bit many zeros. So I'll say three E five. Means who can tell me what that means? Yeah, you yeah. Scientific notation, right? And we'll leave infect, uh, we'll make infectives one. We'll start with a single infectives, a single infective. Okay. And and we'll start with zero recovery. Um, you know. We said susceptibles, but to be consistent, I'm going to say susceptible. Um, we're going to use uh, singular for all of them. Infective and recovered. And it's a little bit more secure. So instead of saying susceptibles, it'd be susceptible. It'll count the number of people who are susceptible, right? Okay, now let's go put in some flows. Um, so the first flow we're going to put in is from infected, okay? Um, and uh, from susceptible to infected. Um, and it should stretch all the way into infected. And this flow will be called infection, okay? And then we're gonna put in a similar flow from infective to recovered. And guess what that's gonna be called? Recovery. Good, good. Okay. Now, we're going to put in something that is going to be a dynamic variable, meaning 
it's going to eventually change based on the state of the model. It's going to eventually evolve based on the state of the model. But for now, it's going to be um, used as simply a constant and we'll be expanding this. And this will be called, and I'm going to use a, a term of art that you're responsible for. It's called force of infection. And we're going to hitch it up and then you're going to tell me what it means. So what is what is the meaning of it? What is it being used like? Okay. Um, what, what's its role in the model? How is it what sort of role is it playing in the model? What what is its meaning? Oh my goodness! Oh no! Well, any of anyone who's behind me has a chance to catch up because any logic crashed in most most unfortunate time. Well, well, I'll be there. We go. Um, what a what a travesty. Okay. Uh, software engineers out there, <laughs> make note, <laughs> build quality software or else it will die in front of the internet. Um, <laughs> okay, so a uh, dynamic variable called force of infection, okay? Force of infection. Software engineers, but all others, make note. Save early, save off, okay? Um, so we're going to link up force of infection into infection, and we're going to link it up into susceptible or the, the infection into susceptible. So it also depends on the number of susceptible. And I'm going to put down a formula here, which you should recognize very readily. It's going to be force of infection. Remember, autocomplete is your friend times, hey, force of infection. I don't know why it inserted it. So times, no, no, susceptible. There we go. There we go. Okay, so you're going to tell me, and I'm going to put in for force of infection, I'll put in 0.01. I'm sorry, 0.01. Okay. Um, hmm. um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll put in 0.05 instead. Okay. So what is this construct? We've seen it many times before. What what is this? This is a what? Well, that's three words. It begins with that for the first word. The first word is like it's a situation where the rate leaving a stock is proportional to the stock. It's just some, um, right now it's a constant times the value of the stock. If you double the stock, you double the rate of this flow up, right? Should be very familiar to you. Mm -hmm. um, now, this force of infection is not gonna be a constant soon, but for now we put in a constant just to make sure we understand the results. So if we ran this, what would we expect to see? We run this model right now. What would you expect to see? Ladies and gentlemen, take it from an old man. Build early, build off as well. Run early, run off. Okay? That's how you learn. And you're learning shapes you're modeling. So if I ran this, what would I see in terms of behavior of susceptible? You tell me. What do you think I'd see? Do you think it'll be going up? Will it be going down? Will be going down faster initially, uh, and then slower, or slower and then faster. What? We're going down at the same rate over or, or, all the time. Going down, yes, Tyler. Yeah, there's fewer people remaining, right? You should recognize this. This is a standard behavior of a first order delay, right? Can anyone give me the formula for how it decays over time? The formula. Or how it changes over time, the number of people in the stock is given by what time? It's e to the minus alpha t, and alpha here is what? The force of infection is 0 0.05, right? So it's e to the minus 0 0.05 times t. 
which by the way is one over e to the point of five times exponent squared one over. But but the idea is that uh, over time um it it decreases exponentially in this way. Faster at first, as Tyler said, and then slower. Mm -hmm. um, there's fewer and fewer people left, and therefore there's fewer people per day leaving, and so it decays, but it decays slower in terms of the number of people leaving per day. It goes down less quickly, the number of people on the stock. Does, so for a given person in the stock, does their chance of leaving in the next day change? Over time? No, it doesn't. It's always 0.05 per day. It's just that there's a lot more of them leaving early because there's a lot more of them to leave early, right? Okay. Okay, now how about this stock, infective? What is this going to be doing? Mind you, the recovery is, is zero. So what is this stock going to be doing? Sanity check. Is it going to be rising or falling? And, and why rising? Inflow with no outflow. It's just an accumulation. For those comfortable, for those who, who, who have glimpsed the beauty of integral calculus, it's the integral of this flow, right? It just integrates. It just accumulates this flow. That's all an integral is. It's an accumulation. It's just adding up little bits of time, this flow into it. It's just accumulating it. And, and why is it going on faster at first and then slower? Yeah. yeah, it's the excellent mark. It's 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 kind of the the flip side of this, right? This drops and these people there's kind of a conservation of people. People who leave here come into here, right? So this is dropping faster at first, and all those people are going here. So ladies and gentlemen, what's the final exam? You have a question that has a stock and it has a single flow into it. When you ask, you know, the relationship between these two, right? This is an accumulation of this flow. Technically, it's an integral of this flow. Um, and it's going to be accumulating it over time. It's going to accumulate how many people flow down here are going to come in here. So you can use this to like, Accumulate the number of cumulative infections that have occurred in the population, or the number of people that have died in the population. You, you can use it to accumulate. It, okay. Okay, but we're going much further than this. That that's just a reminder, right? Now we're going to take recovery, and we're going to put in a mean time until recovery. Okay. Here we go. So we're going to put in mean time until recovery. And actually, I'm going to do it as a dynamic variable here. Why? Because we might be modifying it to be dynamic in the future. So mean time until recovery. Okay. Mm. And we're going to stick that here. And we're going to... Oh, Ladies and gentlemen, take care of all man. Save early, <laughs> save off. Um, nope, any logic is watching this. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that would be um, a good, a good thing. I think we will send it to their support team and say, please watch. <laughs> times x and y and who knows maybe yeah times z okay mean time until recovery um and you tell me what the formula is for this for this flow what's the formula yes good okay good good hey get back there Okay, good. Divided by the mean time until recovery, right? Okay, where's my properties window? Come on. 
get get back here. Come on. Um, okay. Good. In fact, they're divided by mean time until recovery. Okay. Okay, now what, what are we going to see if we run this now? What are we going to see in terms of susceptible? Will it be any different from before? No. Why not? Why won't why won't the value of susceptible over time be changed from we just saw? It's all downstream a bit, right? There's no impact upstream, right? How will the value of infective be changed? Will it just accumulate and accumulate and accumulate without limit? Will it initially rise or fall? And why will it initially rise? Greater inflow than outflow. The inflow will be something pretty fast because they're leaving here. The outflow initially will be very small, right? Because there's only one person here. So the inflow will be greater than outflow and effective will rise. Will it rise forever? Why won't it rise forever? There's a point where the inflow is equal to the outflow because the inflow of it is going to be going what over time? Down over time, decrease, right? And if, if infective is increasing, the value of its outflow will be what over time? If, if if effective it's itself increasing the remember the flow out is proportional to a sock so it will be going up over time and so the two are going to cross at some path and Mark's exactly right there's going to be a point in which they're equal now is are, is it just they're going to remain forever equal after that what's going to happen inflow will go further down which will mean that the inflow is what compared to the recovery the outflow it means it's going to be lower than the recovery the people leaving the rate of people leaving is going to be eventually higher so mark's exactly right initially inflow is greater than outflow infectives will be going up as infectives goes up recovery will be going up Right. And but infections are still coming down because we're draining susceptibles. And at some point, these two will be equal, in which case, inf when they are equal, infective will be doing what? It'll be flat and it will have reached its what? It, it's, it reached its, well, it's in balance. So I'd say yes, it's in maximum. Ladies and gentlemen, have you ever noticed? When a function is at its maximum, do you remember? A function is at its maximum, it's flat. Its derivative is what? Zero. Its derivative of zero here. So, um, you know, this is f of x or f of t for some function of time, right? Um, you could write it the f of t. Derivative of this function over time, its rate of change, how quickly it's going up per unit time, is equal to what? Zero. And in a practice that I'll be using in this time, you can also write this as f dot. Derivative of this with respect to time specifically, we write as f dot. So, so at its maximum, it's it's imbalance. It's in inflow equals outflow. But what is it going to do after that? Inflow will be dropping and, and recovery is at its biggest point here because the stock is at its biggest point. So if the inflow drops further from this, guess what's going to happen? The outflow will be what compared to the inflow? Greater than it. And so the infective will start going what? Down, down. Now, meanwhile, recover, what's it going to be doing? Speak on, use. Increase. And is it ever going to go down? No, it's just an accumulation, right? 
just like convective once was, right? So let, let's go test out our intuitions. Yes, Patrick. Sorry? Oh, oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. What a, what a, what a oversight. Thank you. It's, it should be um, three, three days. Three days. What a what a rookie mistake. Thank you so much, Patrick. It's awesome. I'm sorry. Oh, did I not set this? Uh, no, I did. I did set it. Oh, and I I put a typo there. Yeah, I, I there was a there was a formula there. I just happily ran it with divide by zero. Uh, yeah, it was divide by zero. Yeah. Um, although I don't think I had run it yet. I think it was just, it's not a, it would be spotted at run time, not at compile time. Anyway, um, okay, so here we go. So this stock, in fact, if rises initially, the inflow is greater than the outflow. It reaches a maximum point where the inflow, what compared to the mount, uh, outflow, equals it, and then it starts falling. It's falling because the inflow is the, the value of infective is falling because the inflow is what compared to the outflow? Less than it, right? And meanwhile, the recovered stock is doing what? Rising, right? Mm. Okay. So now we have number of infectives that is initially rising and then it has this long tail on the, the upper side and it's draining down and and uh, recovery is rising. Um, and if we run this out, where's everyone going to be? If we run it out for a long time, where's everyone going to be? Recover, right? Susceptible is going to zero. Uh, infective eventually goes to about zero and recovered is basically everyone in the population. Are we all comfortable with that? Basic stock flow reason. Okay, now we're going to take this where we've never gone before. Are you ready? Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, force of infection, we're going to put in place some reasoning. The idea here is that what is force of infection representing? How is it functioning in the model? What's its role in the model? It's serving as a what? This is a what? This is a, what is this pattern? We've seen it many times before. It was mentioned on the pop quiz. What is this? It's a first order delay. And what's the role of this? Is it playing a mean time in the stock or is it playing a chance per unit time of leaving the stock? Chance per unit time of leaving. So this is a chance per day that you'll get in fact, course of infection. During the pandemic, our lab was reporting this for every province on a daily basis um, to provide the minds, estimates of the force of effect. But it's a very actionable thing. The question is, if you go out and circulate in the population, this is susceptible, what's the chance you'll get infected per day, right? You can estimate it from wastewater and from, uh, from values, uh, from number of cases that are observed, which you know are incomplete, et cetera. This is the force of infection. Yeah, it's a it's a probability per unit time that someone will leave susceptible. Are you comfortable with that? Right now, it's a fixed value. We're going to change this because in a model of infectious communicable, the number of people being infected per unit time right now is shown in the model as only depending on susceptibles. But what is it missing? If this is about a communicable disease, this is about contagion, what is it missing? That it also depends on what, Tyler? In fact, this. And right now that's absent, right? There's no impact. There could be 100 million people in the stock and it doesn't impact how quickly people get this infection. Do you see that? We're going to remedy that. Now, I want you to follow my reason, okay? Because so I'm going to go through key reasoning that I want you to understand. We're going to see it again and again and again. And if any of you go on to the further modeling, you'll see this reasoning come up to gazillions of places. There must be tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of papers 
written with this basic reasoning in place. Okay, so we have a force of infection. We're going to calculate this dynamically based on the state of the model. And critically, as Tyler said, it's going to not only depend on the uh, it's going to depend on the number of infectives. Of course, the number getting infected will depend on the number of susceptibles. We have susceptibles times the force of infection. But the key is to make it depend on the infective. So here we're going to put in place this key reason. So I'm going to drag in a parameter, okay? And this is going to be um, contacts per day, okay? It's going to reflect for susceptibles, for that matter, for infectives, how many contacts we assume they have per day, okay? And we're going to put in 20. Okay. 20 contacts per day. And the idea is that each susceptible is going to have 20 contacts per day. So imagine the contacts of 20 day. Now, a certain fraction of those contacts that they have per day, a certain fraction of those 20 people they meet per day, are going to be infected. Where might we get some estimate for the people they meet? A fraction of them are infected. Yes, by the way, maybe the fourth infection. Okay, well, that's what we're going to calculate. Forced infection says if you're susceptible, what's the chance you'll get infected per day? But there's actually a simple way you can find out what fraction of the people we might meet are infected. Uh, yeah, and um, so uh, remind me, uh, yeah. Good. It's exactly right, Joe. That's exactly right. So we need we need uh, some way of figuring out what fraction of the whole population are infected, and that might give us a pretty good sense for the people being met by the susceptible. What fraction of them are infected? So we're going to do a little bit of work. We'll create a a, a so-called dynamic variable, an auxiliary variable, is commonly called that's going to be called population population size okay and for now we'll we'll make it a dynamic variable you could argue well it's a fixed constant here and we'll talk about that later but there may be some extensions for the model which are which are going to treat it as dynamic where you might have deaths occurring for example people being born so we're going to have a population size. And what's the formula going to be for this population size? It's about as simple as they get as formulas. What's it going to be? Yeah, the sum of the three stops. Susceptible plus infective plus recovered. Okay. Notice I... I capitalized and I, I think the capitalized stocks and things that are simple sort of tools and stocks. Um, remember, that's what it is. Here it is, population size. Okay, so what if we wanted to figure out the fraction of people, the proportion of the population that is infective? How would we do that? Doug said it earlier. What is it? Sorry? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to introduce a term. It's going to be called uh, prevalence of infection. Okay. You could call it fractional prevalence. Uh, you could call it proportion of infection. But the term of art is is prevalence. And you'll sometimes hear me say it, and I might as well get you used to it. So it depends on the population size, but what else does it depend on? 
Number of infections, good. Okay, so give me the formula for it. Yeah, good. Infective divided by divided by population subs, right? Mm -hmm. Save early, save all. Good. So right now, if you're ever to say the population size is what is constant. Right? right now, there's no one coming in, there's no one all right. Right now, it's just a conservation of people. They're either here, here, or here, right? You're not leaving them all, and you're not coming in. So at the moment, the population size is constant. So as the infective goes up and then comes down, what will the prevalence of infection be? Also rising and falling, right? Okay. So the goal of computing the prevalence of infection was to figure out how many of the contacts per day that a susceptible has might be infected. So if we have, say, 20 contacts per day and the prevalence of infection was, say, 10%, 0.1, how many infectives might we need per day on average? By contacts of 20 people overall per day and 10% of the population, 10% of those people out there are infective. How many infected people might I come into contact with per day? Two, 20 times 0.1, right? Number of contacts per day times the fractional prevalence. And the idea here is going to be simple, that each of those contacts, we have a certain probability of getting infected by. Forgive my lapse in the queen's um, And uh, so the idea is maybe each of those contacts, we have a... Point, point one, or sorry, a, a ten percent chance of getting infected, and we're going to put aside the need to say, well, they could get infected by this one, then they can't get infected by that one. We're just going to, we're just going to say, okay, if you have contacts with two infectives in the course of a day, the chance that you get infected is two times this chance per contact with an infective that you get infected. So I'm gonna create a parameter called prob transmission probability, okay? And the idea is that if there's a susceptible and an infective that come into contact, there'll be some probability that it will be transmitted of 0.1. Are we okay with this? Okay. So now we have, so it's 0.1, transmission probability. That's specific for a discordant contact, a contact between a susceptible and an infected. And we're going to hitch all these things up to force of infection. And then you are going to tell me the formula for it, which will be a very important formula we will see again and again. And that is featured in that video that you're, You've been asked to watch for Thursday. Okay, so what's the formula for force of infection? That will say if, if, if uh, each susceptible has this many contacts per day, given by the parameter of that name. Of those, this prevalence of infection is the fraction that are infected of their contact. And each of those contacts with an infective that they have confers a transmission probability of infection. What's the formula? So, Patrick. Okay, that's that's exactly right. Um, so, Patrick got it exactly right. I am going to switch the ordering for didactic purposes just to explain it. Okay. Um, uh, and, but Patrick's answer was absolutely correct. The reason I'm doing this is I'm saying, imagine you have 20 contacts per day and then 10, 10% 10 of the, imagine, well, I'll say, imagine 20% of the whole population is, is infective. So you have contact with 20 per day, 
20% of the whole population is infected, and therefore you have contacts with four people on average per day, if you're susceptible, four people per day who are infected, you have contact with. Again, this is 20, this is 0.2, so you multiply the two, and infective has contacts with four people per day that are infective, and then each of those four people confers this probability of getting infected, 0.1, okay? So this person, a susceptible in that situation would have a 0.4 chance, a 40% chance per day of getting infected. That would be their force of infection, their chance per day, the probability per day of getting infected. Or if you want to be simpler about it, imagine contacts per day were 100. Imagine it were 100, right? And the prevalence of infection is, let's suppose, 50%. 50% prevalence of infection. 50% of people out there are infected. How many people, if they have contact with 100 people overall per day, how many people on average do they have contact with that are infected? 50 per day. And each of them supposed there were a chance of 0.01, 1% chance of getting infected. What would their chance per day of getting infected be? Point 0.5, right? If they had contact with 100 people overall, and 0.5, 50% of them were infected. This is 100 people overall that they've 50% of them are infected. Multiply these two, you get 50 per day, right? Uh, 50 per day that are, this is 100 per day that they meet anyone. 50% of those 100 per day are infected, so they meet 50 people per day who are infected times 0.01, the probability that they'll catch the infection from that person will be 0.5, right? Um, so 50 times 0.01 is 0.5. Are we okay with this? This reasoning? It's a kind of mechanistic reasoning. It's a kind of simple step-by-step -step reasoning. And if you remember it in this way, this is the total number of contacts they have. This is the number of contacts they have with infectives. So, sorry. This is the number of contacts they have per day. This is the number of contacts they have with infectives per day. And each of those confers this transmission probability to them. The formula kind of falls out. Do you see that? So let's run this. Build it, build it, and then run it. Oh, okay. W. Okay, what did I mistype? W cannot be resolved to a variable. Um, oh my God. Oh my goodness. I must have must have uh, accidentally. Uh, done, done a wrong key press or something. There we go. Okay, sorry about that. Um, okay, so it's happy. And uh, sorry, Rachel, did you have a question? Transmission probability is here 0. 0.1. Yep, yep. Okay. Okay, so let's run it. What do you think will happen now? Will you tell me before I run it? What do you think will happen? And why? What do you think is going to happen? How will it differ from before? Anyone? Yes, Rachel. Okay, so right now they're staying recovered. We're going to change that later, or you may change it at home later, given the time. But. Uh, Right now they're staying and they're staying recovered. So what do you think is going to happen? How do you think the number of infectives will change per per unit time? Okay, so it's going to rise initially very quickly. What's going on here in this initial rise? What's happening? That's right. So you have. A uh, situation where it's rising quicker and quicker and quicker in this unstable way, exponentially growing. If you could see it there, what do you sort? Of, what sort of feedback is behind that? 
that sort of snowballing growth. Uh, Sophia. Yeah, reinforcing feedback. What's the reinforcing feedback? What's the positive feedback here? Can you, can you formulate a positive feedback, the reinforcing feedback that's driving there to be more and more and more infectives? Give me a, a narrative. Give me a story, Patrick. Uh, yes. Infecting, um, infecting, more infecting more susceptibles, which breeds more infections, more infectives, and the cycle continues, right? One infective infects two, you know, infects two additional people. Now they're three, and and then they each infect another another two people each, right? Um, before they recover, and then you get uh, this compounding, right? So one becomes two, becomes four, becomes eight, becomes sixteen, right? It just builds on itself. Do you get that? So infection breeds, infectives breed new infection, which breeds infectives, right? It builds on itself. But does that go on forever? And if not, why not? Why is this turning around? Why is the number of infectives turning around? Yes, Tyler. Good. There's people recovering here. So that's a key part of it. But what else is happening that's limiting it? Yes, Rachel. Yeah, you're you're draining the number of susceptible people, right? So you've drained them down. And so you've got more and more infectives around, but there are fewer and fewer susceptible for them to chase, right? So it's harder for them to be infective to find people to infect. And that's kind of sounds zombie like or something, but you know it's harder harder for them to find um, new people to infect, and so you get this self limiting nature of the infection. It rises quickly in this classic what's called an epidemic curve. It rises, but then it plateaus. What's going on at the plateau? You don't really see it here because it's so crude time wise. It, it's it's not showing it continuously, but only every time unit. But when it flattens out at the top here, what is the case? When it's, when it's, okay, inflow. So when the number of infectives flattens out, when it's in balance, when the number of inflow, when the number of infectives is not going up or down, it's in stasis, it's staying the same. What equals what? Yeah, inflow equals outflow and be more specific. What equals what? new rate of new infection, the number of people getting newly infected per unit ton per day is equal to what? The number recovering per day. Now, as we'll see, and this is a key point, it also means that each infective is going to infect exactly how many people before they recover? One person at that key point because they're just gonna pass it on. It's it's like, it's a relay race, right? It's like passing the baton to someone else they recover. So there's no change in the number of infectives. I pass it on to you, I recover, you're the next one who's infective. At that key point, the number of, the, the rate of infection equals the rate of recovery, or, or more generally, the inflow equals outflow for the infective stock, and each person, each infective infects exactly one person before recovering. Um, what do you think is happening in the recovered stock? Is it going up or down? It's still going up, but you can see it's kind of different from before. It actually it accelerates more, and an infective accelerates more than it did before. Before it kind of went up in a in a sort of way faster and faster, and then slower and slower. Um, uh, originally, and then when we drained it, it went up and then kind of drained down, uh, went up and slower and then, and then drained now Now it sort of picks up in an obvious way. Ladies and gentlemen, what we see here is the classic hallmarks of infection spread, of contagion in models. And we have nonlinearity. Why is it nonlinear? Can anyone say, why is this nonlinear? You say it's nonlinear if the rules that govern this model depend simultaneously, not just on the sum of 
combinations of different values, but if there's some multiplication in this case, for example, there's some nonlinear wet, which in this case is multiplication of two state variables. Can anyone say where that is, where that occurs here? Yes, Mark. Yes, the impact is Yes. And in fact, if you unpack that formula, remember the, the formula for infection is equal to susceptible on some force of infection. It's all right. That's the traditional concept. But that force of infection is actually contacts per day. I'm going to call it C for brevity because we're at time times the fraction of people in the population that are infected times the probability for discordant contact, contact between susceptible and infected, that transmission is a transmitted. And I would argue that this has a multiplication of two state variables. Multiplication of two stops. What are those two stops? Remember, this is the constant C and beta is a constant. What is, what is what, what's the multiplication of two stops? And then n is a what, What's the multiplication? Yes, sorry. It's s times i times y. Right? That's all it is. It's some constant from s times i. S times i, it takes two to tango. You can't just have infectives and no susceptibles and get any spread of infection. See that? You can't just have so you can't have just susceptibles and no infectives, no infection, no outbreak will occur. You can't have just infectives and no susceptibles, no outbreak will occur. You need both. It takes two to ten. It takes you need both of them. And that's a non-linear relationship. And we're going to come back to that and talk about some of its implications in coming lectures. Okay, we're done for today. Thank you very much. Because we don't have the mobile lab today, um, I will ask people. Um, I think I think we'll we'll just say you can keep those, and I may ask uh, people to build on it for some home exercise. We'll try to have the mobile lab for next time.